Take your sticking paws off me, you damn dirty ass. We're going streaking! Dave's Video Graveyard. That guy in a little coat. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought. I'm not a smart man. What's wrong with him? My first thought would be a lot. Why so serious? Wise men say forgiveness is divine, but never pay full price for late pizza. Hail to the king, baby. Hey, Ma! The meatloaf! We want it now! The meatloaf! Of all the radio shows in the world, this is definitely one of them. Dave's Video Graveyard on 100.5 Wow FM. Okay, you people sit tight, hold the fort, and keep the home fires burning. If we're not back by dawn, call the president. It is Monday night, Dave's Video Graveyard once again. And Grant, how are hey, you doing? Hey, good, how are you? Not too bad, a little bit excited and terribly nervous. Now, yep. I hope everyone out there listening took uh, great notice of that show warning because uh, <laughs> tonight's definitely a bit of a mystery ride. We are joined by none other than local burlesque star, Moisty Magic. How are you doing? Hey, how are you going? Not too bad. So, why don't you tell the world who you are, well, what I you're really, about? I'm, I really appreciate the warning, first off. <laughs> Um, so I am a local burlesque artist, Miss Burlesque Adelaide, 2016. I'm a pole dancer, so Miss Pole Dance, South Australia, Amateur Division, Miss Entertainer. And I am also a mouthy internet hoe, if you follow me on Twitter, <laughs> which I would advise don't. So is Dave, that must be why you two get one. So we well. do, we do. We have a secret internet thing. Don't tell anyone. We're I'm like sorry, ying, Dave's wife. Ying and yang of the same <laughs> amount of terrible. Yep. Now, I must say, your stage name uh, has got more feedback than our entire show <laughs> ever has. And one thing I really enjoyed, I was talking to a friend that's a pr- friend of the show, professional wrestler, and so is his wife. Now, there's a wrestling move called a Bronco Buster where basically you throw someone into the corner and you jump on them and basically ride your crutch. <laughs> right. It oh, sounds like my Saturday night, really. <laughs> Him and his wife have decided that uh, they're going to start calling that move the Moisty Magic because it's just a yeah. fantastic name and they loved it. Can we get him in here to show me how it's done? <laughs> I want someone to Moisty Magic me all over my face. Yes, so uh, as we said, there is a definite uh, content warning tonight. I'm really sorry, <laughs> Mum, if you're listening. Hi, Maureen. Sorry mom. to all the mums that are listening. <laughs> sorry to all the mums. Um, hi to mine. Hey, Mum. Um, so, yeah, you've picked some of your favourite films for some hilarious reasons. Um, it's a, a very mismatched list. That I'm is a not very words. eclectic <laughs> person. It was list. trying to pick films and I was like... What do I like? Trashy horror, a bit of glamour, a bit of, you know, green ogres. Did you want to show off for all our listener out there? What's that? Did you want to show off, show off for all our listener out there? <laughs> I listener. do. I want to look like a deep and meaningful person as opposed to just human garbage. She's, she's one of those film people. <laughs> <laughs> she's a nice lady. <laughs> That's it. So we might play a track as we get into the first choice that you've picked here on Dave's Video Graveyard. So why did you pick the Rocky Horror Picture Show? Tell us about it. What's it about? Well, what is it? First of all, that song just speaks to me on a personal level. I just really want someone to touch me <laughs> as I'm very alone. Is there anyone out there, please? <laughs> uh, look, it's everything. It's that cult classic. It's got, you know, a little bit of horror, a little bit of musical, a little bit of cross-dressing, a little bit of sex. It's everything you want in life, really. Yeah, when, right. That is right. when I was a sheltered little boy, I watched this at my auntie's house because I was a musical kid. Yeah. I'm fine to say it. Um, basically, I loved Grease and I loved a few other musicals. And my auntie's like, oh, you've got to check out Rocky Horror Picture Show. So I was maybe seven at this time. <laughs> and so she puts it on. And I was like, that's so weird. That film only goes for half an hour. And it wasn't until I had met my wife. So I was an adult before I found out that my auntie was turning off the film (laughs) half an hour in so that I wouldn't see all the rudeness. That's amazing. But I was like, forever I was seeing like, because she used to fast forward it and show me the time warp and everything. I'm like, 
these songs don't fit into a storyline <laughs> like the other ones do at the start. Do you feel like Tim Curry would have given you a sexual awakening? Because um, my ex-girlfriend showed me this film when I was like 15 and, you know, when you dating an internet girl and it's terrible um, and it was like the beginning of me and fishnets I was like I'm going to wear fishnet everything yeah. oh, that was my sexual awakening well I grew my hair long because too often <laughs> when I was finishing high school people were like you really look like meatloaf in Rocky Horror I was oh, like, wow. you know I can see that you do look like meatloaf actually I feel I look more like meatloaf in, in Fight, Fight Club, Club to yeah. tell the truth uh, oh look it's all it's all the weights that I do. That, that's all. <laughs> it's the bitch tits, isn't it? It is. So, uh, 1975, it came out. It was... Uh, so long ago. It certainly it's still was. just as fresh and original today, man. It's and never they, did, they redid film. it recently with uh, Laverne Cox. Yes. Uh, yeah. Li- yeah, they did it was it live, a live version. Um, yeah. From Orange is the New Black. All right. And, uh, was that any good? It was pretty good, mm. actually. You know, like I'm not a fan of remakes. Not that I watch musicals anymore, but it was better than Grease. It was better than Grease Live. <laughs> they did a Grease Live. Yeah, it can was they just like, not? Just I know. stop. What are you doing? <laughs> just you know, release Grease Two again. No, Dave, <laughs> no. Grease Two is terrible. That is a crime this against is, humanity. No, like this is an ongoing. <laughs> I, mean, I love Grease, Grease two. two. Is a good film. Did you ever? Get I'm around, leaving. <laughs> did you ever get around to seeing Shock Treatment? the sequel to the Rocky Horror Picture Show. I've been really disappointed by a lot of sequels in my life. So yeah, I think good. I this watched is, it, but I yeah. probably blocked it out in some sort of like mental trauma yeah. sort of way. I mean, how do, you, how do you add a sequel to that? If there's a clear flow on, I understand. But, you know, how do you, how yeah, do you flow yeah, on from well. the ending Grant, of Rocky Horror? Would you think Moisty is a magenta or what do you think? Or a Columbia? <laughs> what do you think? Oh, I got oh magenta for sure. I reckon. Is it the red hair? I think it's it is. The frizzy it's red hair. Yeah. yeah. Crazy, Look, I brushed it today, guys. I put in effort. <laughs> it's the deep manly voice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm definitely Frankenfurter. It's my it's my penis that does that. <laughs> Off to a <laughs> great <just> start. <laughs> <Is that like? laughs> <Hello. Yeah. laughs> Another hollow out to uh, Moisty's mum listening at home. <laughs> you made me like this. <laughs> Awesome. So, anything else you wanted to touch on about the film Rocky Horror Pitch? So, do you go to the um, midnight screenings that they have down... Uh, the Capri Theatre? Yeah, I do, to- I do. And I have a pair of gold hot pants. And I went to a Rocky Horror dress-up 21st several years ago. Um, and I wanted to do something a bit different, so I went as Rocky. I wore a chest cool, finder. Man. I contoured on abs. I wore my shorts. And there was nothing greater than like dry humping women on the dance floor or pretending to be a dude for a night. I, I was like, really into it. I feel like I could pull off a great Susan Sarandon. I think oh, Janet You've got the boobs it. for it. That's it. I think Janet Weiss right here. You could. I'll be a riffraff. Oh, you I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> That's not even what I was going to say, but I, I self-stopped. I was going to say, you could play Brad, but then I realised... Oh, yeah, no, I'll be Brad. <laughs> There's a lot of chemistry between you guys. I could feel yeah, that. We love each other. That's it. <laughs> and uh, so are we letting anyone know now? The, are we making it public? What? About tonight. The, and how it corresponds to you. No, oh, this is my last show. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. You're fired. Goodbye. Not really. This is Grant's last show, and you've ruined it by showing up and making tonight all yeah, about you. About me. Well, really, I've ruined everything. Just ask my mum. <laughs> Hi, mum. So you'd say like, a, there's a good time, and then the asterisk on a good time is moisty. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> awesome. Now, um, you've gone from a a musical classic. We'll get in without saying too much about what the next film is. <laughs> this one, I can see it's how... for all the family, this one. Yeah, no, Sunday this... Sunday afternoon, watch it with the kids. I watch this with my kids all the time. This, <laughs> yeah, this right. puts my one-year-old daughter to sleep every time she watches it. I'm calling the police. <laughs> this is Dave's Video Graveyard. Guest choice with our very, very special guest, Moisty Magic. So you picked the 2009 Dutch horror film, The Human Centipede, went on to be known as the first sequence because they made two sequels to this film I what is wrong with you <laughs> <laughs> many things we don't talk about them in polite company look i really struggled to choose which one of these i would actually choose because i love the three together as a trilogy um it was just i remember watching it and i was in the lounge room of a share house with a couple of people and my housemate was like i downloaded this film let's sit around and watch it and just it coming on and from start to finish being transfixed with this like what is happening? What the hell? Yeah, I, I felt the oh same, but I don't know if I enjoyed the movie so much. I was like, no, this, what is this is This is one of those films that didn't even need to market itself properly because yeah. once the concept got out, every, I remember wanting Everyone to see this. To watch it. 
yeah. just from the title of the film. Yeah. Um, for those who haven't seen it, it's a love story, and it's um, it's it's a it's, it's still basic- a better love story than Twilight. It's, to be honest, oh, anything is. It's basically the ultimate date movie. Um, yep. If you take someone on the first date and you want to watch movies, forget <laughs> Netflix and chill. Human Centipede and Spend your night alone. And scat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sing sing jazz tunes. Yeah, scat. So uh, the human centipede. Yeah. Um, I loved how disturbing it was without any gore and any like. There wasn't that shock of like normal horror movies where they use as much gore porn as possible or. Well, because yeah, it did come out right in the time of the likes of Hostel and all the very visceral on-screen films. Um, Which I just get a bit over, to be honest. Like it's well, even the Saw, yeah. even the Saw movies fell into that routine of just outdoing the previous sequel, one yeah. with Let's gore. Let's make it as gross as possible. Where the first one was clever and you know had Robin Genius. Hood men in tights yeah, in there. it. Yeah, yeah. so um, I think this is a great um, a great uh, <laughs> signal of how the night's going to go with your yeah. list. Uh, <laughs> so you're a well cultured young lady, especially the one I'm trying to say. What is your favourite part of this film? Look, I. Oh, I don't even know. When they're all strung together. When they're all strung the together. The end, I think that's just this part at the end where there's just the very ending where there's no clear finish to it and it's just a sad moment where you're like, I don't know what's going to happen and I'm not okay with this. And oh. I absolutely yeah. loved, as we spoke about, the South Park. Uh, the, human of, sentai pad. the human sent yeah. iPad. I will not own any <laughs> Apple products because of that. I absolutely love where it's like, should I eat the uh, vanilla paste or the vanilla <laughs> pudding or <laughs> cuttlefish and asparagus? Uh, it's so delicious. Uh, so um, yeah. So you you, did, you couldn't choose between the three. You love all three the same amount. You know what? It follows one of my other favourite trilogies, which I'll talk about later on, where the first one, the concept is really disturbing. The second one, it's visually really disturbing and they really push the boundaries. And then the third one, they go over the top and made it made it comedic. And I yep. really like the three together, the, the way th- they do that. The third one was the prison, yeah, with the, uh, <laughs> with the like, um, satirical look at, like, Oh, it was immigration fantastic. And I haven't seen past the first one. I couldn't bring myself to watch the sequel. But <laughs> the second one like did almost break me. Um, right. It was pretty full on. But I have seen a Serbian film and nothing yeah, will push past that. I don't recommend that. that to I've anyone. never... Um, Do you want to have hum- a date night? <laughs> <laughs> a Serbian I, film and crying <laughs> in the corner. I have never told so many people not to see a film after I saw it, even as a joke. Yeah, like, yeah I was don't like, do it. I was like, I can't... It's the only film I've ever deleted off my hard drive. <laughs> Really? Yeah, yeah. It's really. Not all that when I, porn when I, that you're ashamed <laughs> of. Just no, a Serbian that's fine. shame. Ooh. When I uh, when I legally purchased it and put it on my hard drive, <laughs> it's the only film that I deleted after legally purchasing it and putting Hi, it on my Ezio. hard drive. We yeah. legally purchase everything. I yeah. swear. <laughs> Uh, that film that's banned in Australia, I, I legally yeah, yeah. purchased it somewhere. Shut I up. bought it Shut from up. JB yeah, Hi-Fi. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In saying that, I saw Salo recently in JB Hi-Fi. I don't know if you know of that film, but uh, nope. it's kind of a 70s, not quite It was the first Serbian of its kind, yeah, wasn't yeah, yeah. it? Yeah, it was um, very, very disturbing. And now you can just buy it in JB. Like, it was the kind of film, I had it on VHS from someone that had given it to me back in the day. And it was the kind of film you were scared of being caught with. Like, you, you kind of thought, like, if the police found you <laughs> yeah, in possession right. of it. Similar to, like, The Faces of Death or films like yeah, that. Yeah. Cannibal Holocaust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah. It I was Spit right, on Your Grave. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. It was all these uh, the video nasties. And I was like, I'm so scared of having this film. Now you can buy it in a store. Yeah. I'm like, what is the world the coming to? collector's edition of Cannibal Holocaust. It comes with all the special features. I'm like, yeah, this film's awesome. If I, I want to be so disturbed good. by a film, I just watch up. the last 10 minutes of The Mist and just cry. Oh, no, no. Never again. Oh, God. So, um, yeah, you've revealed a lot about yourself. And one thing, I would die a happy person if I could watch David and Margaret review, review. Human oh, Centipede. Oh, that would be fantastic. Oh, no, That's what, on my bucket list. My favourite thing with David and Margaret was always when they totally missed the point or demographic of a film. I, my favourite yeah. thing was watching them review Bad Grandpa with Johnny Knoxville. And I was like, why did you even go and see this film? <laughs> I just like to imagine David and Margaret in the cinema watching that film with all the teenagers. The popcorn. Oh, Margaret, we're in for a treat tonight. 
human centipede comes in. I feel like you are going down a completely different uh, track than that sentence started as. But anyway, we are going to move on to your next choice, which for me is the standout film of your list tonight. And uh, definitely excited to hear the reasoning behind it. This is a 100.5 WOW FM Dave's Video Graveyard. Have I said that yet? Oh, a few times. What's the Are name you? of the show? Grant's Video Graveyard. No. Moisty's Video Graveyard. Yeah. Oh, right. I see how it is. <laughs> so for the last time tonight, that was Moisty Magic here on <laughs> Dave's and Dave only. I'll see myself out. Video Graveyard. Because of Moira's next choice, Moisty Magic's yep. next fantastic choice, starring Eddie Murphy and Mike Myers before the world knew they were sick of him, it is the 2001 <laughs> film Shrek. So tell us why you picked this family classic. <laughs> well... There's certain times... Which, sorry, which one of your personalities picked this up? <laughs> Sometimes Moisty likes to get a little sleepy, a little bit dopey, a little bit <laughs> munchy, and it's one of my favourite films I like to watch when I'm in that state, you know? It just makes you feel good. In the state of South Australia? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. I'm following. I'm following. So it's a uh, bit of a parody of other uh, nursery rhymes and whatnot, and... Uh, yeah, what do you love about this film? Just the ogre. Ogres have layers, okay? And I feel like I relate to that. Listening. Shrek is life, Shrek is love. Oh. Great video. There's video on the internet. <laughs> you know what? I think, no, I think no. that meme has made me love Shrek more. Because I can't unwatch it now. I can't unsee yeah. Shrek is life, Shrek is love. <laughs> I can't hear the song Hallelujah without, like, forget just Jeff Buckley, forget <laughs> everything else. I just think of Shrek whenever I hear that song. And, uh,. That song, uh, All Star, is also uh, always, uh, you know, referred to as a Shrek song. It's it was great. from Mystery Men with yeah. Ben, Tell ben No, Stiller. it is the Shrek song now. Yeah, but Mystery Men deserves that song because, you know. That was also an excellent film, to be fair. But now it's you, no Shrek. You, you had a few films that you wanted to give honourable mentions because you had a lot of difficulty coming up with 12 films. I did. Look, I'm a really flaky person. So when you were messaging me, I was like, oh, I don't know. I like movies. What's on Netflix? I like cats. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, there was a lot um, that I couldn't really choose a title for. I do like kids' films. Like, I do like kids' films with adults' jokes in them. I just like yep. kids' films as well. Like That's Matilda, you are a child. Matilda is one of my favourite films, and yeah, if it's on TV, awesome. I cancel whatever I'm doing that night. Sorry, Day I'm, night's over. You even Matilda's a, on. You even sorry, a Matilda I'm Reunion sick. video lately, man. You I know. Love it. I was like, I'm sorry, I can't come out tonight, but uh, Major Pain's on television. <laughs> How good was Major Pain, though? Best that, that's nostalgia right there. That reminds me of my childhood. Did you bother with all the sequels of Shrek? I reckon I watched. I think I watched the second one and then I gave up. Because it got pretty bad as it went along. And then there was the Puss in Boots spin out. Yeah, I Puss just, in Boots is all right. I think there's on four Tony Shreks. That's why I like that one. I think there's four Shreks, two Puss in Boots. And there are all those Christmas specials as and well. And yeah, yeah, all the DreamWorks things that they do. Can we just point out the most disturbing part of Shrek? The donkey and the dragon yeah. had a child <laughs> together. Like, I'm not okay with this. So you're saying if DreamWorks said, listen, we're releasing for adults... The Honeymoon Night on video. <laughs> I would not watch that. That is oh, worse what? than a Serbian film. No. Stop talking about that film. <laughs> I'm so aroused right now. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say. Uh, yeah. Originally, most of the film was completed with the voice of Chris Farley. But sadly, he passed away before it was completed. Well, and was Mike, Mike, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't know. It. And Mike Myers took over and... Uh, because he's from a Scottish background as well as being Canadian. He uh, <laughs> did a Scottish accent for the whole thing. And uh, if you go back and watch So I Married an Axe Murderer, where we he plays... Love that film. He plays his own father-in-law is this, and he's Scottish. Scottish. Yeah. And so you just watch it and he's doing Shrek's voice. <laughs> it's really weird. Then he went on to make the absolute classic The Love Guru, which oh, I loved yeah. that film. I haven't seen it. It's terrible. It's but terrible. I loved it. Film. Zero it was, out of ten. You like terrible things, though. I like Grease too, so you take that back. <laughs> I'm leaving. No, it's it's. One Help! Of, they locked the door. <laughs> Grease two is one of the top two Grease films. Is it? Yep. And I'd beg anyone to find that Fair wrong. Enough. Yeah, so take that. We might move on if you've got nothing else that you love about Shrek. Look, it's what else can I say? He's he's a green, he's an ogre. Why hasn't anyone out there on the internet put audio from Delirious and Raw from Eddie Murphy over oh, Donkey? <laughs> like it would just it would make it my would day. ruin the film. 
other or than the it? sequels. Yeah, it might make it better. Well, if you've seen the Shrek is Love video, I don't think there's any... <laughs> that has ruined everything. There's no unruining what you see in that. So uh, we're going to move on to the next one, and you and uh, Grant can write a love letter to Bruce Campbell for yep. this one. Oh, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to elaborate on that? I don't have to go to the song now if you want me to just... Uh, no, no, let's move on. <laughs> oh, we're moving on? All right. Let's just leave it. 2002. I was in high school when this came out. I can't Bubba believe Hotep. that. Bubba Hotep. That's what we're talking about. Thanks. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't I was know. Excited. I didn't excited. know when I was halfway through <laughs> describing it. What was I describing? Sorry, I was excited. Sorry. Starring Bruce Campbell as the real Elvis um, who's been hidden by the CIA in a... Uh, Retirement. Oh, time and village which also homes the real jfk who's not really dead but in fact <laughs> been brain transplanted into an elderly black man yeah. and uh the entire concept to this film if, if you've this heard amazing. if you've heard anything we've just described and haven't seen this film that's on you like what well, there's more to you've that. wasted <laughs> your life if yeah. you have lived this long and you haven't seen this film what's that there's also there's a, a soul-sucking little- mummy it's, I'm in. Yeah. yeah. Just in there dressed as a cowboy as well or something. Did this <laughs> film... I just checked. Did this film win an Oscar? No, it didn't. No. Should have done. Made it on a budget of $1 million. Went on to make $1.2 million. Hey. Who <laughs> it's does, a profit. Just from us who doesn't the DVD. want... Who doesn't want <laughs> $1.2 million? What do you like about this film? Oh, it's just fantastic. I don't know. Would they classify this as a cult classic? For sure, I think man. Instantly. Anything that classic, has Bruce yeah. Campbell. Anything yeah. that Bruce Campbell does. Yeah. Yeah. It's just... Um, my brother made me watch this movie, actually, and I was like, what the <laughs> hell is going on? And as I got older, I appreciate it more, and I'm a big Bruce Campbell fan. So yeah. I just, I love his charisma and the, his, just his acting. I don't even know if he plays a character. He's just Bruce just, Campbell, yeah, just really. Bruce like, Campbell. And yeah. that chin. We on actually point. That chin. <laughs> We spoke earlier on the way here that Bruce Campbell is in the same vein as my man K. Russ, Kurt Russell, where he's just... He doesn't mind being the hero and the joke of the film, whereas yeah. you know a lot of other action stars have to be the very self-serious. Um, I love that Sam Raimi gives him massive cameos in, in all his films. Everything he does, yeah. He uh, doesn't take himself too seriously, and I appreciate that as a person. Yeah, he knows that as this great cult cool icon, and he just he's had been having fun his whole life. I've been Bruce Campbell. And that's Pretty why I love him. Writing books, meeting fans. <laughs> yeah. Just having an epic chin. Getting kazoo <laughs> solos. Yeah, getting kazoo Jessica. solos. He's you know made you've, it. You've made it when someone's playing a kazoo in your honor. <laughs> um, I really enjoyed this film. Um, at the same time, I was a bit disappointed at the time because... Really? From memory, it took forever to come out. It was one of those independent That's kind of how your mother feels, yeah. really. <laughs> <laughs> True that. So, um, it took so long to come out. In the cinemas, <laughs> I've got yeah. nothing. Like I'm, just, I'm lost. That was great. That was. Amazing. Oh, it was a great. Sorry, let's get talking about the film. Sorry, that was how very about, mean. How are we not only made this your last show, we make it your last <laughs> few minutes on the show. We'll just wrap it up <laughs> that here. That was so funny. Got nowhere to go from here. <laughs> Shut up, you guys. This is professional radio. You are. It's best. Yeah. So um, we're just gonna play the Shrek. Song over and over again for the rest <laughs> of the show. Just all I've star just over and over and over. And I promised I wouldn't tell this story when my mom was listening. Hi, Bernadette. But there was one night, I work at a certain gentleman's club within Adelaide, and there was one night that me and another girl decided to dance to Smash Mouth All Stars. And there's nothing in the world that you can't make sexy, I believe, if you try hard enough, except Smash Mouth <laughs> All Stars. What's a gentleman's club? Uh, I don't know. I've never been one. Me no. Yeah. Never heard of it. Yeah. No. What is it? I'm a it sounds nice like lady. Sounds like somewhere they play chess. And yeah, smoke, chess and like discuss pipes. politics yeah. and literature and respect women. Yeah. <laughs> Respecting women. That's the respect. Do you know who respects women though? Who? Bruce Campbell. He does. <laughs> he does. Beautifully <laughs> brought back right there by the hostess with the mostess. Hostess with the most chest. About me. Oh. Yeah, yeah. No, I got no chest. I had to go after Nona and Mona, and she's like Rudy McBoobs, and I'm over here like a 12 year old boy. We didn't notice. We're professionals, and we'll hear about yeah. the movies. Oh, yeah. Oh. Except for she did pick um, uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off, which means which is can, a great film that you hear for some reason. We can never be together. That just means, unfortunately, for her. So all the more for me, Nona. You if do? you're listening, will you be my wife? Oh, that's the yes random. vote was mm. in. Okay, we can do it now. Oh, we're topical yeah. now. Yeah, <laughs> that's never happened before. Look, it only <laughs> took how many minutes before I got political? 
Well, that's what I was worried about. I was like, well, here's a here's a video box that she could flip up and use as a soapbox. Be careful, guys. I've never had an opinion about politics in my life. I don't know what you're on about. You're just here to be pretty. I'm just here to be pretty and when, talk about movies. When do you start? <laughs> I'm trying really hard. I meant start talking about movies, of course. <laughs> This is Dave's Video Graveyard. It's turning a little bit nasty here because of Grant being English. Sorry. And uh, we're going to move on. How about on. Brexit, though? Yeah, how about that? I don't Ooh. even understand what's going on there. I thought Brexit were like Eggs Benedict. <laughs> I'm like, that's it sounds like sick. a really yeah. terrible breakfast, yeah. doesn't it? I'm kidding. It was pretty terrible, to be honest. Yeah. Oh, I went to this cafe for breakfast on Sunday. What did you have on breakfast? <laughs> Brexit. <laughs> Brexit. Brexit. What, what's that? Brexit and it's eggs. Like, it's kind of like Eggs <laughs> Benny, but like way worse. Just smashed and ruined and... <laughs> And on that note, we'll move on to our next film. Oh, we're doing because we're professionals. Tech. We didn't really talk about it. Oh, sorry. So it's about Talk a mummy in a retirement home and the real Elvis and Black JFK. Do what more do you need to say about the film? It sucks the souls of the old people out through their buttholes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's, some, that's where I was wanting to go with that, yeah. Is that I mean, how I lost so my soul? <laughs> yeah, that's you know it that. goes through the butthole. Yeah, oh, I understand now. <laughs> that's a great I want to say I'm cooked chicken and I'm pretty sure I lost my soul in a similar way. But honestly, what more, <laughs> why didn't they just have? I have a really visual imagination. <laughs> Thank you for that. That's worse than a Serbian film. I hope you're picturing lots of ginger hair. <laughs> anyway, moving right along here, we're nothing but professionals. And uh, we're going to move on to our next film. This is Dave's Video Graveyard having a very heated discussion off air and uh, just critiquing Moisty as a person, you know, the huge. <laughs> Zero out of ten. Would so, not bang. You've already packed up because it's 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 like <laughs> he's last checked out last day. It's your last day of work. It's like, <laughs> did I leave the oven on? Not my problem. Yeah. So uh, originally, I was introduced to this film as a 1990s miniseries, which you know I didn't even see this one first. I saw the Tommy Knockers first because I was a huge <laughs> yeah, right. LA Law fan, um, and then I went back and saw this and. Quality's not there. Tim Curry is absolutely amazing as Pennywise. Is Pennywise, Tim Curry Pennywise. ever not amazing, though? Like, is there anything that he's done? I loved him it? in, um, let me think, Home Alone 2. Yeah, he was oh. fantastic. Oh. Congo, I stand corrected. Congo, yeah. he was fantastic in. Um, it was in Something of a Night, The Hunt for Red October. I'm pretty sure it was in that. I didn't like just, uh, The Wild so Thornberries. I wasn't a fan of that because I was more of a Rugs, rug rug Rats kid. <laughs> oh, right, Rug Rats yeah. 5. No, Our Real Monsters. There we go. Yeah. As long as it was Nick, I was there. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you said you've read the book. I have read the book. Yeah. She's a wow. smart lady. <laughs> I know how to read. I'm not just pretty and smart. I finished high school in 2003 and have read four books since then, I think. Yeah, yeah, right. But I did listen to World War Z on an audio <laughs> CD. So does, does that count? count? No. Why? Because... I still, actually, in saying that, I still buy Animorph books at Savers. <laughs> <laughs> That's nostalgia. Goosebumps, though. Nah, too scary. Oh. It's got to be Animorphs. <laughs> Do you want a blanket when I'm going into the horror movies? Yes, like, we please. can hide you under a blanket. It'll be nice and warm and safe for you. So, tell us what you like about this. And I'm hoping, like, the 2017 film did so much justice to the miniseries. Yeah. I, I really loved both of them. But... You have to revisit the not the nineties version if you're going to speak about this because it is aged really badly. Oh, it it's really terrible. Is. You know what? I have so much love for it, and I had to eat my words when I saw the the new one. I was like, "Nah, it's going to be terrible. I don't like remakes. I don't like remakes. Of horror movies. Evil Dead's the only good remake." And then I was sitting in the cinema being like, "Well." sure showed me that. And see, a big part of it was like Stephen King came out and he was like, this is the best adaptation of one of my works ever, you know, other than something that Frank Darabont's done. And it's like, you said the same thing about the TV movie version of The Shining, Stephen. Go and, <laughs> go and write your yeah. books. Go write your books and shut <laughs> your face. Go back to yeah. your corner. <laughs> Do you, I don't hear a typewriter clicking, Stephen. Shut up about <laughs> movies because you directed Max. You do movie, you, Stephen. Awesome. You do you. You directed Maximum Overdrive, Stephen, so you need to shush. Maximum Overdrive's great. I love that oh, film. I don't know. Oh, ACDC. Like, because it's so uh-huh. bad, but it's great. So what do you love about it? Do you, It's, uh, is, it's so a I lot was, more disturbing in the book. It is. It is. Look, I think that 
I don't want to say the word rapey, but I think the book is a little bit more rapey. <laughs> like it's a bit more alludes to what the undertones of the clown are. Yes. Yeah. But the movie sort of takes me back to when I was in high school once again and a girl, all girls sleep over. And um, we watched this movie and it just being like terrifying but hilarious at the same time. And I've always just, I think it's one of those films that really sparked my love for trashy horror. And yeah. When I first moved to Adelaide, I watched this with some friends that were from here. They were talking about a clown forest here in Adelaide. Have you ever heard of that? No, where's the clown forest? Somewhere around Coromandel. Coromandel Valley Way or something. And I was like, that sounds like an urban legend. But I, you always met, like I met so many people like, oh yeah, my cousin's been there. They've seen the clown. What ifs? But then there was that clown epidemic last year. Yeah, that was last year. Like in America. That had nothing to do with the 2017 film. I'm like, that's beautiful timing, (laughs) though, on their behalf. Yeah, maybe it was one of those viral marketings. Yeah, with all the, uh, what are they called? The uh, influencers. Is that what it is? The people that get paid to say stuff's good. Get a real job, okay? (laughs) Entrepreneur. (laughs) From my parents' basement. But then in 2001, we got it also... Subtitled as Chapter One, um, it's basically the childhood part of the story, which was handled so well that I'm really worried about the adult side of things because it's like, yeah, right. this was so perfect in so many ways. It was beautiful, and it was such a good coming of age story that you kind of have that juxtaposition of this coming of age story with this clown, and so. And that that's one thing that Stephen King's always done well with the likes of Stand by Me and that he he really gets he a group a of good, kids. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he nails it. He, he it's loves a bit of kids. A, it's a bit of a lazy trope. Stop smiling, <laughs> you guys. Honestly, so uh, yeah, it I'm was just happy. Yeah, I'm that's it. Time. Life's good. Okay, yeah. it was made for thirty five million dollars, and it went on to make oh, it only made six hundred and eighty five million dollars in oh. two thousand. Never going to be a sequel. I would put it out there, and I know you're going to say Dunkirk, but I think Dunkirk. it was the best film of the year. Oh, I think Ooh, it was up there. That's with a the, big call. It was up there with the Oh, top sorry. I've changed my mind, so just disregard that. Two, three, is what you're going to say, isn't it? No, that's the best movie ever, ever but right. Get Out is the best film I saw this year. Oh, that was a good film. It just surprised me so much that I loved it. So, yeah, um, you read books. I sometimes <laughs> read books. Do you want to know a secret? No. Oh, okay. That sounded so creepy. That was like a horror movie line. Do you want to know a secret? Do you want to see? <laughs> <laughs> we all float down now. That's it. So, uh, if you've just tuned in, we're joined by Moisty Magic, uh, local entrepreneur, <laughs> influencer. <laughs> I don't uh, have a real job. <laughs> here to tell us all about her 12 favorite films so far she has picked. I can Rocky, count to 12. Rocky Horror Picture <laughs> Show, The Human Centipede. Shrek, which you should watch both those two together yeah. because they, they're kind of... They're it's kind of like if you flow on one to the other and then you should watch Shrek they're is kind Love, of Shrek is Life. Yeah, yeah. They're like compliment pieces. Then we had Bubba Hotep, which is an absolute underrated classic. I feel no one loved it, but they should have. I feel no have. one even heard of it unless you know who Bruce Campbell is. That's why I only did 1.2 mil. That's it. And Just It from the 90s and from the 2017s yeah. and the book because you've read a book. That's the whole point, I can read. yeah? <laughs> She's a smart lady and she doesn't like politics. So no, terrible. She said not to bring them up. So uh, we move on to the next choice. Um, a very girly film. I'm sorry to, um, you know, assume, very but, girly. you know, it's very it's a girly. a rom-com, isn't it, this one? That's it. This is a first. It's the this notebook. Is another it's thing. like the notebook. <laughs> it's a companion piece of the notebook. It is. You're listening to Dave's Not Grant's Video Graveyard, the Tarantino film from 2009, Inglorious Bastards, a satirical look at the war, but I think you nailed it even better, saying it's basically a cowboy film yeah, set in a, the war. A Just with Nazis. A Wild West vibe to it. It's great. Uh, basically a, a ragtag team of Nazi killers that love to yeah. kill Nazis. <laughs> Nazis. <laughs> and uh, one thing, like, we've spoken about this many times on the show before, Brad Pitt always gets lumped in. Half people know that he's an amazing actor. Everyone else thinks he's just a pretty face. But you he put him. He's not aged well, though. You, yeah, he's, he's getting he's crater starting face. Like, yeah. He's starting to look like crater face from <laughs> Greece. Um, you put him in a film with Christoph Waltz. Waltz? Yeah, how would you say his name? Waltz, yeah. If you're not um, mumbly. And you realise that it's a completely he different league. He stole the league. shot, didn't he? He did. Christoph Waltz. He, he was so sinister. And so amazing. And the worst thing was, even though he's such a terrible person, you find him likable as well. That's it. And the scene, funny. 
The Did scene with the dairy farmer where the family are under the yeah. floor. I remember seeing it in the cinema and I was just so on damn the edge scene. The I was whole waiting time. to get her into the film, yeah. So why did you pick this film? Is it because you're that big of a Mike Myers Shrek fan? I just <laughs> love Mike Myers. I just imagine him as Shrek. Look, it's really hard to pick a Tarantino film, isn't it? Because everything he does is just... Gold. Gold, yeah. but also so pretentious. Yeah, but it's fine because... But it's him, so these, he can get away with it. These are products of what he wants. This yeah. is what he loves put onto screen, which I love. That's what I've always loved you about see him. his and film nerdiness in his films. That's what yeah, I love yeah. about him and John Carpenter. They put they make the movies they want to see, which is always a great mark of a John uh, Carpenter's director. a thing. That would, that's another honourable mention. That is the second greatest film ever made. What and is that's th- a fact. After Grease 2? <laughs> no, <Yeah. laughs> after Terminator 2. Just oh! <laughs> Oh, yeah. Anyway, you could, like, yell way louder than <laughs> I could. Necessary. I'm sorry, Is everyone who's deaf. Now. Anyone listening with headphones, uh, send the bill to Moisty Magic. <laughs> um, yeah, I really love this film. It does... It's it, One thing for me, it seesaws in tone. Like, one minute, you're like, oh, this is a feel-good film. And then it's like, this is a violent Tarantino film. And then you're like, no, it's funny again. And it's, You kind of have these two clashing storylines against resistance. Like... One sort of the French resistance versus the American resistance, and then they meet together in this fantastic Tarantino bloodbath. And yeah. when uh, when Fassbender gives Holds away the wrong fingers, yeah, that's the that, best scene that the is film, such man. a great. Just film. that entire card game, you know something's going to happen, and you just feel the suspense building during this card when game. When he orders the, play the drinks, then, yeah. such a well written. It's all over so quick. It's such a quick massacre. It's just it like, is, pfft, but that's so dead. Tarantino. It's yeah. so drawn out. Yeah, and then it's just bam, all over. Weinstein Company film. Hmm. Oh, oh, we won't mention him. Uh, and uh, it featured as the Jew Bear, Eli Roth, who's a terrible filmmaker, that Tarantino fell in love with his films and just I let him... I his films. You know, The Green he's Inferno Green is Inferno is amazing. upsetting. Oh. That you is, not, have you, you seen that? that one? Yeah, I have seen that it one. It is upsetting. Cabin Fever as well, yeah. that leg shaving scene. I think oh, I let my legs yeah. grow, like my leg yeah. hair grow for at least a year <laughs> after that. I was like, I can't do this. You're like, yeah. I grew a foot taller <laughs> out of like, my legs. <laughs> my legs just grew. My legs grew. Um, you know he scene for scene remade Cabin His Fever film, himself? Yeah. I know it's just with him again, acting my- every part because I'd watch that. <laughs> I would you know- love I would love to see like a similar to that Be Kind Rewind with Jack Black. Someone just making big budget films just low budget would be fantastic. That would be amazing. Let's I can get behind ourselves. that. But well, how good <laughs> is punching Nazis though? I just want to say it. Amazing. Amazing. I feel I was born after the punching Nazis See, phase and I feel that I'm a little bit far removed from I, the 40s. I just really like that depending on what's happening in the world and politics at the time, it sort of translates into Hollywood films. Are you cutting me off because I just no, mentioned no, 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 politics? No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, nope. I was like, just wondering if you're going to mention that Indiana Jones punched Hitler in the face. Yeah. So you have all like <laughs> the films where Nazis and then you move on to the Russians and now it's sort of ISIS. And Well, that that was a big yeah. thing, like particularly in like the 90s action movies because of like the fear of the Cold War, mm. the likes of uh, Rocky IV, three. Yeah, yeah. Even Die Hard, you Russia have the Russian yeah, terrorists. Yeah, the Russians. Then the likes of True Lies, where they were Middle Eastern yeah. terrorists, and it moved and on into... Rambo back in the um, the prisons of war Vietnam thing. and Yeah. It's all there. Pretty much all films are, have some sort of undertone of what's going on in Everything the Everything is yeah. political. You can't escape it, yeah. ever. Shrek is life. Shrek, Shrek is, is yeah. life. Shrek, Shrek is love. Shrek is political film ever. That gingerbread man gets his leg bitten off. Yeah. <laughs> so sad. Oh, sorry. Spoiler <laughs> alert for anyone out there wondering what happens. Whoa, to man. You. Sorry. Just it's just like Lieutenant Dan, really. That was yeah. Red Man, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and now we've come full circle. We have Nazis again, and we can enjoy punching Nazis and like yeah. them being our enemy. Oh, actually, um, the doc, the Dutch doctor in Human Centipede was. Uh, they said that he based all his work on real life Nazi. Um, yeah, he had a very like Mengele sort yeah. of look to him, didn't he? He was very. So yeah. uh, Tarantino wrote Inglorious Bastards in 1998, but he held on to it because he wanted to do Kill Bill as well as Death Proof as part of the Grindhouse yeah. thing that just no one got. Um, Except us, we got it. We got it. We we love those we're films. the best. because I had Kurt Russell in it, though. Hey, K Russ. <laughs> K Russ. We're friends, so we call him K Russ. Oh, okay. Sorry, your lover, your bae. <laughs> he's in my phone as K Russ when we talk. Yeah. Send each other pics. Yeah, he's on your restraining orders. Snap the chats. <laughs> do all the things that, like, No one likes her. an unsolicited yeah. dick pic. 
Thank you. <laughs> I send him pictures yeah, of Warren Beatty him. all the time. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's my favorite dick, Tracy. Yeah, I did it. That was good. That was a good uh, one. The name Inglorious Bastards came from Tarantino's favorite war film from 1978, The Inglorious Bastards. Yeah. But because of copyright reasons, he had to spell it differently. Yeah, it's not a remake. No, not at all. Tarantino doesn't do remakes. No. Nah. But it's still a war film called Inglorious Bastards. He does tributes. He likes yeah, to tribute. Yeah, that's it. Homage. That's what he does, Homage. yeah. I think everyone out there listening, the thing you need to take away every time you hear Tarantino's film is, you probably haven't seen True Romance, and you should. You definitely should. <laughs> That's, that's was, basically that was written. That, he well, wrote that was a it. It was a screenplay that got him nice as a writer. Really. Yeah. He didn't direct that, but um, but it, it's Tarantino all over feature. when you watch yeah. it. Yeah, no, is it really there is. a foot scene in it though? Do you see uh, Patricia Arquette's it? feet? I'm pretty sure you do. Possibly. No, Christian Slater's got his big foot in there somewhere. Hey. I don't know. Because <laughs> there's that whole thing about Tarantino has a foot fetish, yeah. and I think he's now he's caught onto it and he's just doing it deliberately. Yeah, it must be now. Yeah, yeah. Can you imagine like, how much let's put some feet in there. Let's do another. I had a picture. I had a picture just. While we're talking facts and telling each other a bit about ourselves, I had on my year 12 folder in high school a post of 28 Days Later, yeah. but it was 28 Days Slater and it was just Chris, a heap, <laughs> That's heap of Photoshop Christian Slaters and AC Slater from Saved by the Bell. It was the That's best. Amazing. And now I have to re find it because, cause, yeah, because you said Christian oh, Slater. Man. I watch Pump Up the Volume. That's why I'm on radio, yo. <laughs> yeah. That's the whole reason. <laughs> and why I drive around in a van near. At late at night. That's <laughs> a different reason. children. <laughs> That's a different reason. So, uh, yeah. Anything else you'd like to talk about? The film Inglorious Bastards. It's just great. I mean, it's, yeah, once again, it's so hard to choose a Tarantino film. It was between that and Django Unchained. Love it. What about Pulp Fiction? Oh, I do love Pulp Fiction, but I think it's sort of, look, my it was my ex's favourite film and it got Oh, there we go. Yeah. I feel like oh. I would be kicked off this show, but I need to say... Don't really rate Reservoir Dogs that high. You said this last week. I'm really a big Steve Buscemi fan, though. Like, not for his movies, well, just because he's face. <laughs> like, just what <laughs> happened to him? Just go and watch Big Daddy, where he's got a turned eye. Full I- circle. <laughs> <laughs> no, we said that off air. I just remember that. That was an off air conversation. Anyway, <laughs> moving right along. We are professionals. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we might move into the next film um, picked by our. My words are just flowing yeah. tonight. I'm just a professional. Flowing out of you like moisture. That's it. Yeah. Hurricane Bianca, seen. which I haven't seen. Me neves. It's uh, basically the gist I get from the trailer that I did watch. <laughs> a, well, um, the song was playing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A teacher gets fired because the school find out that he's homosexual. So he basically big mama houses it and goes back as a drag queen pretending to be a female and gets his job back, replaces himself. So it's, uh, I guess you could say it's a reimagining of um, School of Rock. Yeah, right? <laughs> Is that it's what It's like you're a saying? gay School of Rock, really. That's it. Tell us all about this film. Well, so it was Bianca Del Rio, the winner of season six of RuPaul's Drag Race. Of course, Grant told me that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and so she's an insult comic. Her whole character is based around insult comedy and being really harsh, sassy, and um, quite mouthy take after that and um i don't see what you <laughs> enjoy about her, her him what do you say well i think when she's in drag you'd call it her, her. yeah cool. and then when when you're referring to her alter ego roy havelock it would be a him you know progressive and stuff like that well we're always here to <laughs> learn we're here to learn shrek is life <laughs> shrek is love <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so I, I guess I nailed it. He, She comes back as a teacher and uh, rather than being the pushover that the male teacher was, is quite forceful with the kids and insulting. And then some shenanigans happen. And then, then what? Yeah, so she gets her job back. Uh, so I think it was written, it was a critique of the laws in America that it's quite acceptable to fire gay people and it's just totally okay um so it's crowdfunded uh bianca crowdfunded it after she ran season six and did an independent film um it had it had uh what's her name rachel dratch in it alan cummings had some of the drag race illuminati like illuminati Illuminati. (laughs) sorry illuminati confirmed illumini such as shangela and willem um, <laughs> I genuinely got so lost because I'm like, Illuminati's in Illum- there? <laughs> it's the 
and it goes deeper. <laughs> and was did RuPaul make it into the film? No, RuPaul doesn't feature in the film. Oh, come on. Put, yeah. you, put your name to something good <laughs> other than Drag Race. Sorry. Drag Race and that other makeup show she did, which was pretty terrible. I can't remember. I remember the You Gotta Work song from the 90s. Oh, it's so 90s. Did. Why isn't that song played? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I didn't do my job. I'm sorry that you're terrible at your job. I'm sorry that you added song uh, movies to this list at about six thirty ish tonight. <laughs> I was in the car on the way here, being me. like, "I really like this movie. Can you play this movie?" That's on me. But you know, when you're talking about film on radio, that's just a winning formula, right there. We're like, we're like the new three piece, David and Margaret. Yeah. <laughs> Look, I really like this radio format because I'm not wearing shoes right now, and it's fantastic. No one's judging me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we can throw the carpet out. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure Dave's not wearing pants. <laughs> yeah, he never wears pants. This orgy's off to a great it's start, really. Orgy of entertainment no. that is <laughs> moving right <laughs> along. <laughs> what would you say? How would you sell this film to people that haven't seen it? Why should they go out and see this film called Hurricane Bianca? It's on Netflix. It's on Netflix, yeah. So it's like it's quite a unique, quirky comedy. If you're a big fan of Drag Race, which I am, I'd go and watch it. Um, yeah, it's quite sassy, fun, and it's it's sort of got that insightfulness and a little bit of political undertones, which I seem to like. And one thing that um, is very modern of it, because it was crowdfunded for the the uh, basically the budget. And because it went straight to video on demand being like Netflix and that, doesn't matter. It cannot lose because Netflix or a lot of the VODs will actually pay out what the film's worth and they could probably make another one. I think there is another one. There's um, Blame It on Bianca Del Rio. Oh, of course. Which is in the, uh, in the works. <laughs> How did I forget plug? that? Now, um, I just remind you, make sure you yell as much as possible <laughs> because this is radio and people can't hear if you don't yell. Inside voice. Inside voice. Um, we're going to move on to something just very similar vein to Hurricane Bianca. Um, and uh, we'll move on right here on Dave's Video Graveyard featuring Grant for the final time ever. Yeah, are you sad? No. Nah. You should be. Are you going to like throw like a match over your shoulder as you leave and it just blow up yeah, and you just walk away. Slow away. Motion. That's yeah, how man. I picture it. Except they're not going to drive you home <laughs> and it's going to be awkward. <laughs> this is Dave's Video Graveyard. The next three films Best slash films television ever. show slash reboot that you slash have chosen lifestyle choice is everything to do with Evil Dead was what was scribbled on your crayon written list. <laughs> Tell they us about it. What pens. do you love? Starting with the first film. Which film did you see first? Because I saw part two first. I saw part three first. I watched it backwards. Started with Army of Darkness. Yeah. And went my way backwards for some reason. Don't yeah. know why. I think it's because I was probably too young to start with the first one. But yeah. I remember the hiring Clown House, the film, and it had the trailer for um, Army of Darkness. And it was yeah. just the skeletons playing the flute. And marching into battle, the stop yeah, motion. Right. I was like, that looks like the best film ever. And then when it says at the end, uh, Ash versus Evil, uh, like whatever it was called in the trailer. The Army like, of Dark Le- uh, yeah. Darkness. I'm like, that cannot be the same film that <laughs> has to do with Evil Dead. But really, Evil Dead 2 was a remake of the original, just with the Pretty campy much a comedy. Sequel. It, once again, it went like Human Centipede. The first one was that disturbing concept. The second yeah. one was that shocking visualness. And then third one was... Hilarious and great, <laughs> it and was, just took yeah. the piss out of itself. There is no denying the the effect that it had on all of film, all of horror film. I think these are the best mm. horror films I've ever made. Oh, look, you've seen my leg. You know how I feel about the Evil Dead trilogy. I I have a, a full calf piece dedicated um, to Evil Dead with the calf. Piece. On. Awesome. calf. <laughs> <laughs> look, I grew up in Bendigo. Don't judge me. It's, it's weird that you got a tattoo on like a small cow, but anyway. <laughs> I want a calf piece on my little cow. That was an awesome joke. I'm a dad, so shut up. Yep. I'm um, a vegan. <laughs> you didn't mention that yet. No, I haven't. I've gone how long and I haven't mentioned One it. One hour and 20 minutes. <laughs> oh, wow. That's a record for Congrats. me. Congrats. You, yeah. You'll I'd get kicked out of the club if you do those numbers again. <laughs> Tom Jane will swoop down <laughs> yeah, as the vegan, vegan police. <laughs> Ah, uh, yeah, so Bruce Campbell, Sam Raimi went on to make the uh, Spider-Man, Spider-Man trilogy, trilogy yeah. as well as Drag Me to Hell, which was meant to be a return to form, but didn't feel it. Kind of, yeah. It, it fell it into right. that straight-to-DVD um, yeah. CGI 
There was no pra- There wasn't what, enough practical. Yeah, in. that's what the Evil Dead films are great for. Greg Nicotero's makeup effects, amazing. Which were a big mm. influence also on Tom Salvini. Yeah, he's mentioned it many a times. He was a massive yeah. fan of these films. Um, they filmed the original one in the woods at an actual location. Yeah, yeah. and then uh, the owners got really crappy with people going and visiting the place and stealing stuff. I think it, I would yeah. visit there. I would go and spend a night there. If anyone me wants too. to marry me and take me on a honeymoon there, yeah. I'm so down with it. What about if Bruce wants to marry you and take <gasps> Please. you? Please. Look, I'd turn straight for Bruce Campbell, let's be honest. Me too. Yeah. Well, you don't want to walk in a like <laughs> arc towards him. Is that what you mean? Yeah, like, yeah, turn <laughs> straight towards him? Is that what you meant? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, cool. So basically, a bunch of... Uh, Teenagers go and stay at a cabin in the woods. It's your classic horror movie, really. Yeah. Teenagers, cabin in the woods, something goes wrong. And There's say like what a- you will, I loved the film Cabin in the Woods for all the, all the ties that it did to Evil to Dead. Every horror yeah. Movie, yeah. Did you see that one? Or are you busy on your phone? Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Hollywood. I was just tindering. <laughs> tindering? Uh, I've got to figure out a ride home, you know? That's yeah. <laughs> Get swiping. Get swiping. <laughs> What's going on in Port Adelaide? Oh, wait. You're just on Gumtree trying to sell a couch <laughs> and get a lift home. You're like, take me home, I'll show you the couch. It's pretty stained. That's it. So, in 2013, the film got, well, the original got remade. I loved it. And yeah. I wanted, like you, I wanted it, to hate it. I wanted to hate it. Uh, they did the. Oh, they did a gender They did a gender bend. Tell us about it. Well, they had a lady as the lead character. Oh, yuck. Ladies, yuck. (laughs) Oh, yuck. Why wasn't she in the kitchen, honestly? We're masculines. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Men. We're bros. Bro. Um, Yeah, it was... How many sandwiches does she make with the chainsaw? (laughs) I will honestly kill you. (laughs) These are all jokes and the views of Grant, not myself. It's more of a satirical piece about Grant's feelings. Is it? Can we just like announce the complaint line that people can write to? (laughs) Uh, Just head over to Facebook and look up Moisty Magic and (laughs) uh, send them on over. (laughs) Send me gratuitous nudes, please. So... uh, Tell us more. What do you love? I love the second one was very campy. Second one was the played best one. The first Dead by one. Dawn. Dead by Dawn was These fantastic. films are what filmmaking is all about. They're masterpieces, man. When it comes to B-movie it, yeah. films, it's these are what got me really interested in filmmaking too. When I Obviously, it got me into the horror genre. So I watched them when I was really young. I was like, this is great. Yeah. Like, this is what filmmaking is all about. The Stop cinematography, stealing my words. the sound design. Yeah, that's how I like, feel. Everything, yeah. Are your words all in uh, northern... Yeah. Yeah, ask me like this. <laughs> Hello, governor, cut you up. <laughs> Now, wow. I now, could be the new Grant. Got a bit of when, going on. Yeah, yeah, that's it. It's <laughs> like, oh, we can't, we can't do the satirical <laughs> meninists or whatever it is, but you can take it out on our poor northern Englishmen. Look, yeah, I can't help that he voted for Brexit. <laughs> I wasn't even in the country. <laughs> he wanted the big <laughs> breakfast. He thought that's yeah. what it was. So I don't even know where to go from there. Um, well, back to Dead by Dead. Dawn was fantastic, and it's basically. Amazing. It was almost like Army of Darkness was the pilot for Xena Warrior yeah. Princess. Oh, it was. And, yeah. Because once again, back to Bruce Campbell. Like, he carried those He films. was the Prince of Thieves in, in Xena. Xena, yeah. yeah. And also, um, what's the Kevin Sorbo one? Hercules. Hercules. Yeah. It's also in that. Sam awesome. Raimi produces all those as well. Um, the Sam Oldsmobile that's in all the films, yep. including the Spider-Man films. Spider-Man films. Spider-Man films. I'd just like to point out that um, my alter ego, Asha, was actually, I stole her name from Ash from Evil Dead. That's how much I love those movies. I feel like, other than the whole gender divide, like, you guys are perfect for each other. Oh, I would ruin you. (laughs) Please do. Oh, yeah. What are you doing after this? Tinder in. Want to come come see my soiled couch? Your soiled couch. (laughs) Moving right along back to films. Thanks for setting us up, Dave. Where are you? That's it. <laughs> and he rode off into the sunset. With me in his arms. Awkwardly waiting for me to drive you <laughs> home again. <laughs> Half an hour of just me on my own because you guys are waiting for a lift. Um, there's If you haven't seen the Evil Dead trilogy, you're Do really it. missing out because it's basically, uh, you know, like a time Filmmaking capsule of finest. the best it is really. horror fantastic. filmmaking. Yeah. Practical effects. Absolute that blood first, overload. The first Dead Eye 
with the oatmeal face and the like black fake blood because they didn't really work out color yet. And when yeah, it's translated yeah. into high def, it's just beautiful. It is just trashy horror at its finest. I remember one thing that like really scared me and got under my skin when I watched Evil Dead Two was actually actually Dead Eye Ash. Just oh, I was going to yes. say when so he pops the of the, um, and the puddle, yeah. Also the the hand. Much, Pretty much, the there hands. was there was the Rocky running up the steps, steady cam, but Sam Raimi basically invented a whole uh, application. They basically put a camera on a plank of wood. Basically, yeah, and, and that's how they did all yeah. the evil running through the uh, woods. And there's a lot of we're film oh, the guys. Editing, the editing is great in these films as well. Editing's so good. You seem so stu- you seem so stressed that you can't no, convey how these good films. these films are. It's yeah, just it's an emotion. Really it is a, yeah. like it's pure love. My feelings for Evil Dead. I can't even. I wish there was a plebiscite for I could marry Evil Dead. <laughs> yeah, right. Please vote yes. I just want to marry those films. Yes. Come on, Dave. Say something. No, I got nothing. Like <laughs> you got nothing. You're outnumbered. <laughs> it's like every time anything gets brought up, you're like. Here's a little bit of politics. <laughs> I'm on to you. Shh, don't tell anyone. Okay, um, so what did you think of the TV show? I only watched... Don't tell anyone. I only watched the first season. I really did enjoy it. Bruce Campbell is like a fine wine. He just ages well. <laughs> as does... I would go as far to say that Lucy Lawless is a Ooh. bit of a female Bruce yeah. Campbell. Yeah. I just fall more in love with her the more she's in and the older she gets. Yep. Ah, just swearing. that first first episode where he's making sweet sweet love to a woman and she turns around and is a dead eye and he's just like this just sets the tone yeah, you know, of still, what this tv show is going to be like i love that he wears a girdle because oh. <laughs> you know every morning i look in the mirror i'm like maybe it's time maybe it's time <laughs> <laughs> it was time about 10 years ago mate oh, Ooh, oh. another one oh. take that and I just love the influence that Evil Dead has had in pop culture. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, you have all the, the trashy horror metal, like your old band, <laughs> come out. Excuse me. <laughs> we were death punk. We were not metal. Oh, sorry. Um, I don't know. When I was a 13-year-old, I remember having one of my first awakening experiences over a TV show called Reboot because they did an episode where they did the game of Evil Dead. And it right. absolutely excited 13-year-old non-sexual me in a massive way. <laughs> so Did there you go. need a towel afterwards? Yes. <laughs> Moist. <No. laughs> yeah, everyone loves your stage name. Coming it's, it's back to It's great. It's Why my mum hates it? it and now she's tuned out. I can be like, look, anything that pisses my mum off real is, is really good. <laughs> That's not nice. She Probably seems gonna. lovely, even though she turned off our show <laughs> she and she's blacklisted. <laughs> she's going to handle it. We're going to steal all her radios. <laughs> um, yeah, the TV show, I thought, now that you were a little bit disappointed, Grant. Oh, I was a little bit... I feel the Ash is just a little bit a too loser. much of a douchey douche in this one. Like, he's a charming... Like, he's got that charm about him, Ash. And I don't know, in this one, I thought he's just they've gone a bit too far. But I love the fact that there's got practical effects in there. There's a lot of practical effects that do look like the original films, which is good. But I just feel like the TV show could have been a bit better. But do you feel like it's gone on with age? Like, I feel like you watch it as a progression and you see him start out really young and naive and then he goes through, he gets that cockiness in the third one. And then the fight, like the TV show, he's like... I feel like, without recasting Ash, like, I feel they couldn't have Bruce Campbell play the young Ash. Like, and not even age-wise... He couldn't still have the, like, charisma and the thing without have progressing in his life. But because they didn't want him to progress in his life and basically pick up where he was, he couldn't, he couldn't uh, basically become a better person. So he still had to be the douche he was as a teenager just without the youth and the, you know. Yeah. And the good body. The good body. <laughs> you have a good body. Everyone just, loves a chubby dude, all right? Yeah. Keep telling yourself that. <laughs> My mum told me. <laughs> said I'm I don't want to think about Evil Dead recast. Like, I will accept the remake. You'll take gender yeah, bending. I will take gender bending. I'm all remake. about feminism and I'm all about women in films. Um, but I'm I, all about people that. not slamming their hand down on the desk. <laughs> That's just me. <laughs> That's just me. That's just radio me. You know? I feel yeah. very personally attacked right now, to be honest. Trigger warning. Stop hitting the desk. <laughs> Uh, yeah, like, 
You've picked such an iconic film. There's nothing that needs to be said, really. Except like, for oh, Groovy. 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 Hail to the king, baby. Hail to the king. Give a little tissues. Give a little tissues. That's from my Shop yeah. smart. Shop smart. smart. Yeah, smart. Oh, I love let's all just the, the movies all night. Yeah, that that'll be perfect. That is great. Well, we've just found the formula. <laughs> you two yeah, just, just quote, quote movies. movies. Let's quote movies we haven't seen. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Oh, I'm a, I'm a drag queen teacher. That's in <laughs> Hurricane Bianchi, yeah? Sure it is. I'm sure it would be in there somewhere. All right, let's move let's on, move guys. On then. Sound good? Watch these films. They're amazing. If do it. Watch listening. Evil Dead. If you do one thing with your life, go home and watch the three Evil yep. Dead movies and just think about how wasted your life has been before you saw them. <laughs> and Big yeah, Trouble right. in Little China. The iconic film that uh, me and my bros love to watch while we're... We don't talk about Fighting. it. That's the first rule. What? Yeah. One thing that will always stick in my mind about this film, at the time, Brad Pitt was married to Jennifer Aniston and she went on oh, Saturday right. Night Live and her whole opening monologue was promoting Fight Club. And I just love that to look back <laughs> now... That's she's relationship been heart- goals right there. But she's been heartbroken and burned by, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. <laughs> But also her one original appearance on Saturday Night Live, she promoted Brad Pitt's film for him. Good times. That was a great story. Shut up. I love this film. I I love this film. I've got a tattoo on my leg of it. Yeah. Yeah, I really do. I've got it on Blu-ray and DVD. Well, I've got it on VHS. And I've got a little Fight Club surf as well. I got it from Supernova ones. I read the book. I oh, wanted. I wanted. Ah, oh, Rudy. <laughs> I read books. Well, do you know what I really liked about the movie, though, opposed to the book? Didn't have to read it. That was <laughs> yeah, probably right. my favourite thing about it. I didn't have to use my brain. I didn't have to think much. Me and my bros just watched it. Then we bashed each other. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I'm southern when I'm not smart. Is it because I told you the meaning of the book, and now you're all like, bro, bro? Yeah, no, a little bit. I did. I did understand things at the time because I watched a doco on Chuck. <laughs> That's the only reason I yeah, do all right. this stuff. I love Chuck. You look like Chuck. I do look a bit like Chuck. I look like a middle-aged you, man. Oh, I meant you look like someone Chuck. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have seen me topless, so. We got a uh, call from Mark who said he's loving the show, loves Evil Dead, said to say hello, and he also enjoys your stage name. Moist. <laughs> you're, just, you're just kicking goals with that Moister name. than an oyster. Moist than an oyster. Oh, wow. Did not think that sentence would ever make it to air on our show, but I'm glad it did. So, uh, the next film you've picked is Fight Club from 1999, and it's the film that no one saw the ending coming, but when it happened, Unless everyone you've pretended read the book. to know. Uh, but our they listeners didn't. don't read. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I mean that's that really a, pigeonholing I mean them right there. As a term of endearment, mm-hmm. we are film, yeah, we film watch fans. Movies. It won't even watch a film with subtitles because that's reading. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't no time yeah. for that. 1990 film based on the 1996 novel. Back when you were in your twenties, um, <laughs> Chuck Palahniuk. I can't even say Palenic. his last name. Yeah, um, shut up. Made by David Fincher, who also made Seven, um, Alien Three. We don't mention that. We don't mention that film. And lots of other films. We don't like Alien 3 because it's got a strong female lead is what I mean. But they all had strong Mm. female leads. Yeah, but did they? Ripley. Ripley is love. Ripley is life. (laughs) Ripley is Dana from Ghostbusters. Oh, Sigourney Weaver, though. She Wood. doesn't. We never Wood. got around to doing the Sigourney Weaver special that we were going to do. We're probably I'm still going to do it anymore. next week without oh. you. I'm going to come and just think about Sigourney Weaver in the corner. <laughs> yeah, right. With a towel. I'd like to know the spelling of some of the words in that sentence. But anyway, moving on. The, uh, the. film. T H <laughs> I'm not reading. J. I'm not reading. <laughs> so the film's basically about a insomniac who. I don't want to give it away, but it... it yeah, try not to... Oh, surely everyone's seen it. It's though. 1999 and it. it's Fight Club. Well, the context of it, let's get a little bit political. It was actually <laughs> written by a gay man as a critique of toxic masculinity within America. And it's really interesting... And Meatloaf has boobs. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know my kitten's named Robert Paulson? 
I did know really? that. Yeah. That was awesome. Because yeah. you just wanted to say his I name I just is wanted Ray. to say my kitten's name is Robert Paulson. His <laughs> I name wanted... Is Ro- no one shoot him in the head, please. Oh, just spoiler alert. I thought... Oh, oh. Oh. Spoiler alert. That's always I wanted, sense in that scene on TV as well. When it's on TV, you know when they take the yeah, butterfly yeah, yeah. off and the brain's fall And you don't they see they the... Never the yeah. On TV. Yeah. That's the best thing to ever happen to Meatloaf, really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Oh, hey. He would do anything for love, but he won't do that. <laughs> Stop releasing Bad Out of Hell albums. No one cares. <laughs> so, back to Fight Club. Um, I wanted to rename my band Angel Face because, because it was Jared Leto's character's name. And it was great watching his face get punched in. That I was like know. a sexual a awakening for scene, me. Was it? It was yeah, I was like, damn, moist. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing <laughs> Brad Pitt and slash Edward Norton. You just spoiled You just spoiled You just ruined oh, it. Oh, whatever. So they're the same person, right? No! Oh! That is the amazing Spoiler twist alert. at the end of this. It's um, a real medical condition as well, mate. And it is, it is, is a it? Are you a doctor now? Yes. Oh, okay. Actually, I would like to see I your am. qualifications. I will show you later on. Ooh. <laughs> when, when we go back to mine to see my soiled couch. That's it, yeah. And watch Evil Dead. Qualifications out. Yeah. You want him to help you lift the couch into a van with a broken arm <laughs> cast like in Silence <laughs> of the Lambs. Can we just... Um, Charles Charles Manson died today. This is true. I read it's about this true. on the Facebook. Yeah. Because so I thought you were making a Ted Bundy reference then, no, no, but no. it was actually Silence mm, of the Lambs. Yeah. But that's what Ted Bundy... Oh. So what? He's only now got... Eight life sentences. Now. Yeah, He's done one. come on, we need to revive him and kill yeah. him again. You've still got eight to go, bud. Um, <laughs> I think he's an over glorified piece. Of crap. He is. He didn't even kill anyone. He just directed other people. That's just so lazy. Yeah, but you know. if you're gonna do something, do it yourself. That's right. Talking about my favorite film, Fight Club, <laughs> me and the Bros. Um, apparently, the film was a bit of an homage to Rebel Without a Cause and The Graduate, but who cares? Yeah. Because none of those I films awesome. are They're not Fight Club. Us. That's it. Um, what more can you say? I've already it's given away well the twist. Written, you have. I well love shot. even this film. Great even after you know the twist, you can rewatch this film and pick up on things. One thing I really yeah. like is the first fight Brad Pitt and Edward Norton has, where he punches Brad Pitt in the ear. Um, then when it goes back, you realise the reason that is because he's just punched himself. In the yeah, ear. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. that's beautiful. I just love. Have you ever watched it in slow to tr- slow motion to try and pick up all, all the, the Tyler the splicing in the back and the yep. and the porno splicing? It's pretty good. Pretty I just, good. I just I like porn really. I remember back in the time before internet because that yeah. was ninety nine. It was still what are this still was dial up and ICQ. But uh, yeah, you'd pause just to find that kind of yeah. thing in a film. Well, I know I would. <laughs> You'd in pass your parents' find the basement. Penises spliced into films. In the um, in the movie Tomcats with Jerry O'Connor from Stand by Me, I don't even know what the film's about. But um, there's a bit where he sits there's up boots. in his boxes. No, he sits <laughs> up in his boxes and his wang hangs out it's like a blooper. <laughs> and I remember seeing it and just being so like confused. Like, that was your sexual awakening, wasn't it? No. <laughs> Speaking no, it wasn't. of Brad Pitt's, it like, was. Erica Everard, or however you say it. Whatever, it was Robert Coming. Patrick's doodle in Terminator 2 when he's... <laughs> you see his doodle? No, no that's yeah, what that was. That's, that's not that's my awakening. My awakening was Eric, um, Erica Everard, however you say her name, bouncing out of the cake in Under Siege. Under Siege. All right. All right, I agree. You were going to fly me on it, and then you're like, yeah, yeah. I agree. Have you seen that film? I haven't, no. Should I see myself out? No. We'll just pretend you're not here. Okay, just like <laughs> my childhood, really. <laughs> you're welcome to stay quietly. Um, Brad Pitt, shirt off, oh. ripped. Those porno lines, like, you just like, I just want to lick his abs. That became my obsession with abs. I was like, just please. <laughs> I'm just staring please. at I'm staring at Dave right now saying <laughs> that, just being like, it's oh, those me, abs. It? That's it. You know it's what? what you could all prob- the ladies say when they see me. They're like, you could oh, probably contour oh, yeah. something on. Maybe. I don't have. See, I got it wrong. I like as you say. I heard that girls love abs, but because I'm not a big reader, I read it on paper and I thought it said girls love abs. So I <laughs> ate as many abs as I could. It now I'm in this shade. Yeah. Had all these abs from every shop I could, and then it's like, sorry, Dave, it's actually abs, as in abdominal muscles. I'm like, thanks, guys. See, reading, <laughs> reading, this saves is what lives. happens when you readings. Yeah, readings. 
We should probably move on to the next film because everyone's seen Fight Club. Everyone, good yeah. choice, good choice, film nerd. It is. <laughs> oh, shut up. It is a good film, though. It's great. it's great. And you know what? I feel like my life is just, I'm just a combination of RuPaul and Marla Singer, and that's who I am as a person. A I little bit fabulous, of, but trash. I think more of a um, meatloaf, because your family don't want anything to do. Because <laughs> I would do Robert anything Paulson. for love, but Robert not Paulson, that. Robert because your face does look like it's been shot with a gun. <laughs> just oh. jokes. Just jokes, guys. We're all friends here. Just look on the bright side, because it is Dave's Video Graveyard. <laughs> it is Dave's Video Graveyard, the final song that's linked to a film picked by our ever-so-pleasant guest, very PC, Miss PC herself, Moisty Magic. There we heard from Eric Idle and the guys from Monty Python, because your last choice is The Life of Brian. Tell us about it. Great film. Great film. I actually dedicate this film to my parents. Hi, Mum. I know you're back. <laughs> is, that because, he- is that because you feel your birth is like a, a Jesus? Yeah, I'm like <laughs> the coming of Christ, really. I mean, um, I grew up Catholic. I was sent to a Catholic school and, and, and had that values. And then my parents made me watch this film with them. And I was just so confused as to what's happening. I'm like, what's going on? It was just hilarious. It's just, I just feel like Monty Python, no one has done comedy quite like them. It's yeah, not yeah. often someone picks a film from 1979 on this film, is it? On this show. Honestly, kids these days. <laughs> That's it. Um, With their Netflix and their chill. Yeah. And their Tindering. And, <laughs> and their they're Tindering and their... Movies are. Craigslist. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Craigslist. Isn't that an American thing? Craigslist. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, I don't know. Cracker. <laughs> um, yeah, so what do you love about this film? Oh, it's everything you want. It's sort of comedy, but offensive. <laughs> but... Kind of like me, just big. Because of the themes of religious satire, this film was given an X rating when it was X-rated. first. It must be on yeah. the yeah, yeah. That couldn't wow. be. It meant it couldn't wow. be released. Um, they had. To, it was prevented from being shown. Um, distributors couldn't show it because back in the day, you could only show X rated in X rated movie theaters, not in normal movie yeah. theaters. So, could um, you imagine going to an X rated <laughs> movie theater to see an adult Sword film comedy. and getting shown Life of Brian? You'd be like, "Where's the booth?" Yeah. <laughs> it had so many problems with it. Um, yeah, and you're like, "All right, let's get into it." And it's just John, wow, <laughs> just John, wow, wow, what? John Cleese, them singing that song on the crucifix. <laughs> this isn't what I came for, but I'll stay. Um, it's the highest grosser of any British film in the United States. Your in people. a few years. My peeps. Your, Your peeps. peeps. Um, I loved this film. I obviously watched it when I was way too young to get any of the... love the jokes, yeah. The I jokes still are. watch it and I'm still getting jokes now, but that's probably because I'm a bit slow. <laughs> I read prob- books. Not, prob- <laughs> not probably. Um, it was banned in Norway, not Sweden. So Sweden actually did right. the whole marketing as so funny it was banned in Norway um, as a bit of a, a dig yeah, cool. to the neighbours. Um, Is yeah. it still banned anywhere? I feel like it'd be banned in certain countries still. Oh, probably. The uh, Vatican? Is that a country? Yeah. <laughs> it's a place. Vatican City is like its own country, yeah. Is it? I'm pretty yeah. sure. I don't know. I'm not educated enough. Yeah. Made on a budget of <laughs> yeah. four million dollars. <laughs> you just agree with me? Yeah. Actually, I'm not educated. Go to the corner, break the boy. <laughs> Made on a budget of four million dollars, went on to make 20 mil, which isn't too bad. Um, it's not my favourite Monty Python film. What's your favourite? Holy Grail. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> You've picked wrong. You oh, done did wrong. I kind of, I feel like I have picked wrong. You have. Oh. I've, Let's talk about Holy Grail then. My whole life Hilarious. has been a lie. That rabbit in Holy Grail. <laughs> the holy That's kind of what it's like with my cats. Just, they look cute. And then any point it's a bloodbath, they're going to attack me. Really? That's just cats fighting that as well. Yeah. You know, they turned against me last night the- and now it's like two of them and one of me and I don't want to go yeah, home. But- Can yeah, I stay at yours tonight? <laughs> You're going to be a cat too though. You might do the same thing. Jesus Christ. Let's sleep in day <laughs> van. <laughs> yeah, we're in the back of the van. Today. Don't wake the kids. You keep your kids in the back of the van. Not mine. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> moving on. So the cast, we've got the usuals, the Terry Jones, Michael Palin, uh, John Cleese, also written by those guys. Um, it's fantastic. It's a fantastic film if you're into religious satire. Yep. So that, that kind of narrows down the... Uh, 
you're not a political minded person though. So I'm not, where, do you, I'm not where did really you find a love? It was more nostalgia because your parents showed shout out to your fam. Shout out to my fam. Um Looking yeah, good once with again. A ukulele, yo. <laughs> <laughs> you leave my mum out of it. What? She's a nice lady. Agreed. Look, once again, it's just homage to my Catholic upbringing where I'm like, this is great. Someone is finally taking the piss out of something that I had to endure for years. Everything's about you. It is. All, you said it was my special night. It's it like is. prom. It's guest choice. It is like prom. Just with a better outcome than yours. What else? Ooh, pun. Uh, yeah. A girl showed up. <laughs> oh, that's not very nice. And I was just as disappointed. So I see the parallels now. <laughs> Listen, I'm just you. full of disappointment. We know. We know. Trust us. We know more than you'll ever realise. We read books. <laughs> I don't read, read books. books. We don't read books, but we, we read people. Oh. No, I like that. I'm going to mm. have a t-shirt. <laughs> don't read books. I read people. That's uh, trademarked <laughs> and because you're leaving, you can't have it. Oh. No, that's it. Ooh, awkward. It's, it's <laughs> part of the... The Moisty Graveyard Show. Moist Graveyard oh, Show. Wow, I'm not even out of the building yet. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Grant, you're moving on to bigger and better things. Am I? <laughs> am I? I'm sure. I don't know if I am. Maybe I'm one day. I'm not going to be in Adelaide. No, that's it. You're moving back to Silverton. Broken Hill. Your hometown. My hometown. My adopted Represent. hometown. Represent. Represent in Broken Hill. Will you be working in the Mad Max Museum? Oh, well, I'll be around. I'll be Wait, this is Mad Museum. Max Museum in Broken Hill? Yeah, it's it's <gasps> His family uh, own it. Can you believe it? Can is that the only it? thing in Broken Hill? <laughs> hey. <laughs> no. no. There's a nightclub. And a, n- a nightclub. There's, there's four, a nightclub and four stoplights. Yeah. Yeah, um, there's a public toilet. There's bindies. It's got showers is the there. public toilet the nightclub? <laughs> That's a, yeah. Well, the nightclub is the public toilet. Don't you judge until you've been to the bowl, all right? Yeah. You know what? I could live without that experience. So, Grant, wow. thank you so much for all the time you spent. <laughs> this is the only time I'm ever going to be genuine moving right along. Yeah, feels thank weird. you very the much. It's so nice. It's weird. And no one likes your accent. Oh. It's wow. pretty terrible. Oh, wow. <laughs> but it, it's probably just because we're used to good accents. That's, that's the only reason. It's because we're used to quality that we don't enjoy. Well, it is Australian <laughs> accents. Australian. Australia. You know, we almost went the whole show without you saying something about my accent. Usually every week. <laughs> almost, almost for two minutes to, to what, near the end. That's it. So uh, this final song is for you and for Moira, for your, for your wedding, for your Evil Dead wedding. I cannot and wait. Your, it's going to be great. Do I have to move awesome. to Broken Hill? Can we hold it at the toilet nightclub? Yeah, right. <laughs> at the yeah, museum. Sure. The museum. Mad, Mad Mel might show up. He might. Oh. He could marry us. Oh, he could. He could How officiate. Could oh. I'm sure he might punch Nazis with you. I love <laughs> punching Nazis. Sure Let's would. do it. I'm hoping he would. No, didn't he go on the... Oh, no. We no, no, talk no. About no. It. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's one of the better celebrities now. You, time will tell. Look, I'm, I'm leaving it there. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Where can people check you out? Uh, so find me on Facebook, facebook.com slash Moisty Magic. I'm on Instagram as Miss Moisty. And uh, I'm at the Adelaide Fringe with Dawn of Justice as well as Club Gotham and probably something else I don't know. Moister than an oyster. Moister, Moister than, than an oyster. oyster. This is Dave's Video Graveyard.